This course is sponsored by the USAA Foundation. We'd like to thank the USAA Foundation for their generosity in making this course possible. Hello everyone, and welcome. We all know how difficult it can be to take the time to focus on you and your own needs. The topic for this presentation is focusing on the forgotten me. I want to start by giving you a bit of an overview describing how we will focus our time today. We'll begin with an exercise today that will help bring your attention back to you. Let's get started. When a person is feeling stressed, it can be typical to carry the stress in your body. Shoulders can feel tense, the neck can feel tight and stiff, or there might be knots in your stomach. Sometimes you might not have an awareness of physical discomfort at all because you are too busy to notice. A body scan can help you identify the places in your body where you carry your stress. During a body scan, there is no expectation on what you should be sensing and no worry about if you are doing it right or wrong. We're going to spend a few minutes having you do a body scan for yourself. If you notice any uncomfortable sensations, put your focus on them. Don't judge them as okay or not okay. Breathe into them and notice what happens. Make sure you are seated in a comfortable position with your body, arms, legs, and head supported. Make sure your legs are uncrossed. If it is safe for you to do so, close your eyes. We are going to start with a deep breath. Take a slow, deep breath. Slowly breathe in and fill your lungs with as much air as possible. Hold for a moment and slowly breathe out. Feel the air fill your abdomen. Then, exhale feeling the air release. Pay attention to your feet and legs. How do your feet and legs feel? Do you notice any physical sensation? Do you notice any particular tension, tightness, or discomfort? Do you notice if your feet or legs are relaxed? Don't judge it as okay or not okay. Breathe into the discomfort and notice what happens. Pay attention to your abdomen. How does your abdomen feel? Breathe into the discomfort and notice what happens. Pay attention to your chest and arms. How do your chest and arms feel? Breathe into the discomfort and notice what happens. Pay attention to your neck and head. How do your neck and head feel? Breathe into the discomfort and notice what happens. You have now scanned your body and noticed where there may be tension or discomfort. You may open your eyes. How did this body scan activity feel to you? How might this understanding help you with your self-care? If you have trouble falling asleep because of not being able to still your mind, you can use the body scanning activity to quiet your mind and let go of the tension that you locate in your body. This tool can be such a helpful means of stopping and taking notice of your body and what you need. There are potentially a number of areas where we might look in order to notice that we are stressed. Let's take a look at some categories we might think about and notice. What are our own personal warning signs? First, hopefully you just took notice during the guided exercise of your physical state. Everyone is different and prone to different warning signs. Do you start getting headaches, stomach stress, or muscle tension? These signs are an important message that your physical well-being is being stressed and potentially compromised. What happens to your thinking or cognition when you are stressed? Are you more forgetful? Do you have more worried thoughts? Some people get scattered. Some get negative or self-critical, and some ruminate or think over and over and over the same things. What happens for you? What is your behavior when you are stressed? Do you become lethargic, like you don't want to do anything? Maybe you start racing to do more. Sometimes people get more impulsive and don't think things through before they act. Do any of these behaviors sound familiar? Next, let's look at the social changes that happen when you are stressed. Do you isolate yourself and withdraw from others? Some people may get more social and not want to be alone for more than a few minutes. Finally, what happens to you spiritually? Do you begin to question what matters? Do you wonder if you matter? Do you lose sight of your sense of purpose? Everyone manifests feelings of stress differently. If we can at least stop to notice that, in fact, we are stressed, then we are more able to make decisions to address it before it reaches levels where illnesses may result. What are some of the beliefs that keep us from being open to alternatives? 
What stops us from exploring all of the potential options that may be available to take better care of ourselves? Some beliefs are like barriers. They keep us from setting fair limits about what we can do and may stop us from asking for help. Listen to some of these beliefs and see if any of them sound familiar to you. There is no time to take care of myself. There is no money to take care of myself. It is selfish to focus on myself. If I focus on how I feel, it can be too painful or overwhelming. If I don't do it, it won't get done, or it won't get done right. There is too much at stake. I have to be in control. I need to control the outcome. I just cannot say no. If I say no, I run the risk of others being angry, maybe even losing the relationship. It's my role, my job, my identity. Did any of these beliefs ring true for you? Have these thoughts kept you pushing forward even when you really needed to stop? For instance, we know there is no time is a common belief. But really, is it true that there isn't even 10 minutes in a given day to care for you? Now I want to move on to one of the tools I have found helpful myself. I learned this in a caregiver training some years back. Do you have a pencil and paper handy? It is most helpful to really see it on paper, but if not, you might just visualize this as I'm walking you through it, and you can put it to paper at a later time if you like. Take your pencil and paper and draw a large circle. Inside the large circle, draw a small circle in the center. This small circle represents you. Now I want you to draw an arrow going out from the center of the circle. Make an arrow to represent each person, activity, and responsibility where you expand your energy on a daily basis. Each arrow that you draw out from your center represents an activity or person where you are giving of yourself. Think of all the people that you care for, your work, household responsibilities, and all the many ways you give of your energy. Now I want you to draw arrows from the large circle coming in towards you to represent all the sources of support, the positive energy and connections that come back to you from outside sources. What relationships, activities, and support restore you? Now sit back and notice. What do you see? Is there more going out than coming in? Is it easier to notice all that you do than to notice all you receive? Are the arrows out of balance? How often have you heard, I hope you're taking care of yourself. How often have you heard this and felt frustrated? Even angry may be thinking, sure, that's a great idea, but who has the time or money or help so I can take care of myself? And you are absolutely right. It is so understandable that you would feel burdened by the expectation to take care of someone else. I do believe there are ways that we can begin to address this need for self-care in the light of demands placed on us. We can first start by bringing our attention back to ourselves. We can validate all of the ways that we are spending energy. We can notice the impact of what we are giving and how it may be stressing our system. We can recognize the beliefs that keep us stuck and how we may not be open to alternatives. Finally we can develop realistic strategies that can restore some energy and balance. When we look at developing strategies that will feed, nurture, and restore us, we want to develop strategies that will actually work and that are realistic. What might we need to consider in making them workable and realistic? To begin with, I think the strategies need to be flexible. We need self-care options that can change over time as the conditions of our lives change. For example, if I used to run to relieve stress, but now my knees can't tolerate it, Maybe I need a new activity, such as biking. The strategies need to be personal. These strategies need to be low or no cost. Sometimes we make finances a barrier. Sure, maybe it makes it easier to have financial resources to do something nice for ourselves. But really, many of the ways we can care for ourselves doesn't cost a penny. The strategies need to address the ever-changing crunch for time. Time-sensitive strategies are vital. We want to come up with self-care tools that take only a few minutes. The strategies need to be used consistently. We want to have daily activities and rituals that restore us. Even having one activity a day can have a huge impact on our functioning. Again, don't wait for the week off that's coming up. Do something each day. Sometimes even changing a routine is one way to shake things up in a positive way. If life has gotten too routine, maybe a change would be helpful. Sometimes we become so stressed that we resort to survival instinct of what's called the flight or fight response. We may retreat or withdraw. Sometimes we may withdraw so much that we cut ourselves off from the very sources that give us a feeling of vitality. It may be helpful at times just to withdraw or rest, but it is important not to withdraw so much they become cut off from the very sources of support and nurturing that may be available to help you. 
There are many ways we can grow with resources and the connections that can help us restore ourselves in the here and now that are realistic, time-sensitive, no or low cost, and can be incorporated into daily life. The only requirement is a commitment by you. If you have any questions or need assistance, go to the Psych Armor website or call the Psych Armor support line at 844-779-2427. Thank you for completing this course. 